Before embarking on a day of baling, check that the baler and trailer are in good working order. Let's go over the daily maintenance and pre-operational checklist that's affixed to the inside cover of the toolbox next to the list of tools and supplies. Let's start at the engine. Remove the top cover of the engine to access the air filter. Now remove the air filter and blow out any dust. The Bigfoot 300 is often operated in a dusty environment, and a dirty air filter will reduce engine performance. Replace the air filter as needed. Remove any dirt and debris from the muffler, and then do the same at the fan shape air intake. Debris from HF or plastic could cause a fire. Also keep in mind that the engine is air-cooled, so the air intake must be kept clear. Use a dipstick to check the level of engine oil. Add more if the oil level is below the lower limit mark on the dipstick. There is a red oil alert indicator light below the ignition key that should come on before the engine oil drops below a safe level. When the light comes on, the engine will shut down. But don't rely on this. Check regularly. Always keep a spare quart of oil in the toolbox. Now let's go to the other side of the trailer and check the gas level. Fuel is in the small 7-gallon gray tank on the left side of the trailer bed. Check visually and refill with unleaded 87 octane or higher. The moving parts of the baler and trailer are held in place by steel pins and pin retainer clips. Walk around the baler to check that all of the pins and clips are in place and seated properly in the pin groove. A few spare retainer clips should be kept in the toolbox in case any become lost or broken. The baler should not be operated if any clips are missing or poorly seated in their pin groove. Moving on to the baler hydraulic system. Check the hydraulic fluid level using the gauge that's mounted on the front of the 50 gallon hydraulic reservoir. If the fluid level is below the sight gauge, add sufficient hydraulic fluid to bring the level up to the midpoint on the gauge. Then walk around the baler again to check all the hydraulic hoses for fraying or leaks. Also check for leaks elsewhere in the hydraulic system, including at the connectors and in the control box. Check pressure on the trailer tires and look for signs of wear. Check that the hitch and all connections are secure, including the breakaway brake cable, the safety chains, and the seven pin electrical connector. After the trailer is hitched to the tow vehicle, check that all the trailer lights are in working order. Brake lights, emergency flashers, turn signals, and tail lights. Test the trailer brakes. To avoid overheating, set the brake control in the tow vehicle to the lowest effective setting. And then test again once the tow vehicle and trailer are on the road. After everything's been checked over and the Bigfoot has traveled to the bailing location, Move the baler into position for baling. Set the BF300 on flat dry ground close to the bundles of plastic. The area behind the baler must be kept clear so that there is easy access for loading and room to eject the finished bale. In most situations, the trailer should remain hitched to the tow vehicle. But if the trailer is unhitched, use wheel chocks to prevent the trailer from rolling and to reduce stress on the trailer jack. The wheel chocks or other means of blocking the trailer wheels go between the wheels on both sides of the trailer. If the baler is used indoors, be sure the space is well ventilated.